Welcome to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. This audio experience and podcast is all about social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and interviews with top entrepreneurs in the digital and social space. I am your host, Jean Ginsberg, digital marketing expert, number one best selling author, and award winning entrepreneur. I will be sharing with you strategies, tips, and tactics on how to grow your business and your social media following. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, Jean Ginsburg here. Another excellent day and another episode of Listen by Jean Ginsburg. And today, a very special guest, Crystal Covington. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited that you're here. I was just going through uh, LinkedIn. We've been connected on LinkedIn for a while. We got connected through a mutual a colleague in the Denver area because we're both in the Denver area. So, uh, and then your team reached out to me for the podcast. So I'm super excited that you're here. Um, well, first question I always like to ask my guests to kind of give everybody who's listening some context about you is tell us about your background. So I have been in marketing for all of my life by accident and then joined the ranks of PR by accident as well. So I'm an accidental marketing and, and PR leader and have loved doing that ever since I started. So one of the things that I do is helping companies um, really understand what they need to make as far as revenue, helping them to achieve revenue um, goals through PR initiatives. Oh, awesome. So I know as someone who is in the Denver community and in the women's entrepreneurial community, you have an organization called Women of Denver. Can do you want to share a little bit about what that entails? Yeah, I started Women of Denver back in 2014. So I'm one of those people that I like to have a network of folks around me. If anything goes down, I need somebody to call and say, help me, help me. So I was uh, moved to Denver from Detroit, Michigan, and didn't know anybody. I was here for a year, worked in corporate, and still hadn't made any friends. So I needed to kind of figure out a way to do it myself. So that was my DIY strategy for building relationships. And leading for me is an easier way to build relationships than to kind of walk into a room and with a celery stick in my hand and try to start a conversation. So it worked really well. I made really great friends. And then it ended up being something that was a resource to other people that they needed. So the, so much that I tried to close it when I was, had first started it, I said, okay, I'm good. And I had tried to, you know, stop doing the events at the time. And then people started calling me up and saying, when are you going to do some more events? Hello. <laughs> and it just grew from there. So now it's been many years, lots of shifts and, um, and a great community of women. Is it only women entrepreneurs or all w business leaders or everybody? Both. So there's women who have corporate roles. Um, they're either some form of, they're in a leadership role, or sometimes they might be business development or in sales roles, things like that, where they need to network. And there's a lot of, most of the people, I think 60% or more are entrepreneurs that own their own businesses and are um, bootstrapping, trying to figure things out. Some of them have brick and mortars. Some of them are maybe consultants, things like that, where they're a little bit more nimble. So everybody's in a different place. It's just a really nice, diverse community of people that are coming from different expertises and niches and specialties. Right. Absolutely. And how have things changed um, since COVID? You said that you used to do events before with the organization. So what, what, where is the organization now? So we had to, as per obvious for everybody else, it's, you know, go gone online. So we used to do big summits and things like that. So I, I would do summits two to four times a year, lots of people in one room, closed quarters, hugging and stuff. Totally not allowed right now. Um, so we, we just kind of regrouped to Zoom and what we've done since there's so many things out there. I mean, people can pick up a podcast, they can turn on a YouTube video. There's a lot of ways to get information. So being an information source wasn't really appropriate for us anymore. And people really weren't registering for that. If I put something out there that said, hey, it's just an info meeting, um, here's what we're talking about, people wouldn't show up. So then when I just focused on strategic conversations, we had our community back. It was, you know, people started showing up for that and it ended up being something that was cathartic for everybody as we went through all the stuff that was going on. 
I mean, everybody's trying to strategize every day. There's something new thrown at you between the news and, um, and just trying to figure out everyday life that strategic, just strategic meetings all every week just became, um, I think it was a godsend for me and it was really special for other people. So that was the big transition for us is just turning into a strategic group instead of um, more so directly networking and, and learning sessions. Right. Absolutely. So what is it a strategic group entail? Like do you have uh, specific topics that you talk about or is it just more like what's top of mind? Each meeting has a different focus. So once a month we have business development and people strategize how to deal with that. Then we have a, a once a month marketing meeting and once a month is just a general strategy. So like this week was our general strategy meeting this week and people ended up just kind of, it started with business to a degree, but then people used it for the most part to just talk about how do we re-energize ourselves? And so that one kind of goes wherever people head with it. And we added back a fourth Tuesday meeting this year to have some topics, but we still have networking and discussion around those topics so people can still have that talking time and do little breakouts and things like that, but, um, but learn something as well. Oh, absolutely. So you've, of course, worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and you, of course, are an entrepreneur yourself. So uh, what are the changes that you've seen beyond, besides what you experienced with women of Denver, what are the changes you've seen overall in business or with women um, in the last year? I think for everybody that I've, that I've dealt with, what I realize is there is no best practice right now. So you can't really go back to your workbook and say, these are the things that always work and do that because the numbers are different right now. The results you get from a campaign will look different than they did two years ago. So it's really all an experiment and really being scientific, really being open to understanding that we're going to try this. We're going to do the most logical best practice strategy as possible and we're going to know that we will have to be um, as nimble as possible to make changes and to recognize that we might have to do things that are weird or out of the box right now that we wouldn't normally do and just accept that it's just a different moment and we're pulling things out that maybe you know worked was was more normal in a different time but now it's working today Right. Absolutely. So yeah, it's almost like you're doing testing kind of like with digital marketing and social media, right? A lot. Oh, I always say when it comes to digital marketing, it's all about testing, right? Yes. I, I think it will work, you know, me personally, but it's the, the audience will speak for itself and the data will speak for itself. So it sounds like it's almost like where we are now, which I guess I've kind of been used to that and probably you as well, because you've been in marketing your whole life, you, like you said. So a lot of it is just like how, what, what's working now? It might be different. But I think what seems to be working now, at least in my experience, has been digital marketing and social media for sure, because now so many businesses have, have crossed that line over and they c can't really put it off anymore to do that uh, strategy. Yeah, some of the people that I'm dealing with right now are um, businesses that really didn't focus there. Um, like yeah. A couple of retail folks that I'm helping out that, they had never really focused on their, their digital. They had no SEO. They had no, you know, really strong presence. They didn't even really have much on the tags. You know how they have the, the, the each uh, item on the, on the website. There's no description, things like that. So really kind of working through, okay, now you're online. Now, you know, you're coming into a different way of marketing yourself and doing things. And how do you transition that? And even people like a lot of consultants and, and folks that um, I have in my organization, they've been trying to figure out what strategies they can use because they got through the first year um, and they, they made it. And a lot of it was due to the efforts that they did a long time ago and relationships they had built that panned out. But now it's like, okay, this is now another year we're going into of doing things differently. I've pulled all, I've used all those old resources and I need to start figuring out now, how do I do this a different way? And so they're, they're not used to doing things online. I have two, two meetings tomorrow with friends that I had built relationship with mentors of mine that taught me how to do networking attraction marketing. 
and they're trying to figure out, okay, so Crystal, how do you get those online leads you get now? Um, and so now I get to show them my side of things and how I was able to build it a different way. Right. Absolutely. This podcast is brought to you by the Digital Marketing Method Monthly Group Coaching Program, your methodology for growing your business and your social media following. Join me and my group of supportive entrepreneurs and learn how you can grow your business and your social media following, where we cover topics such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, email marketing, and so much more. Go to dmgroup.online, dmgroup.online. Online. So, and in your community, I mean, have you seen in uh, businesses that are that had to fold, um, or um, I mean, do you share? Can you share any experiences about that? From the very beginning, I had a, one member in particular that was coming regularly, and she did not have enough money to go a month. Uh, at all. There's been a few of those, but her specifically, it bothered me so much because I, I didn't think, I didn't believe the pandemic was real. I was like, we'll be fine. We'll all get through this. And then, and she did not. And so I kept calling her thinking, Hey, you know, I should check in because we used to see each other almost every week. And then it just turned out she, she only, she was not able to, to continue. And I watched that happen with people over a few months, it was kind of terrifying initially to watch. Even businesses that I thought would have stayed, one was a a, 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 um, a cleaning company. She had a team of, of cleaners, but people didn't want them in their house anymore. And right. she didn't know how to educate them on practices. We, there weren't really any practices yet. So her built business um, folded in, I think month three because she couldn't afford the rent anymore. Um, someone I had admired that was about to come and speak her her uh, her restaurant shut down she was featured in a big article in the news about that so it's just watching that happen was really tough for me because I care about these people I had seen them succeeding and some of these people were making the most they were they were thriving the for the first time I mean sometimes it takes many years especially those that had this these um brick and mortars because it's very expensive they had office space and so for for them you know to have been thriving and doing really well and then by no impact they they did not do any it's not a thing that they did or a decision that they made but just circumstances tore them apart and that money wasn't available fast enough there wasn't ppp um accessible for them fast enough to catch them before they fell Right. Yeah. That's very, very difficult trying times for some businesses. Um, but on the, on, I guess on the plus side or on the positive side, you said you've uh, made some changes to your organization. So what are some initiatives to bring those businesses up or the ones that are still around? What are, what are you guys doing to bring them up? Yeah. To keep the people that are still around, the, the main thing that we're doing is just keeping everybody Um, keeping everybody's heads up as much as possible, sharing each other. So helping each other as far as what we can do action wise to uplift. Um, If it, even if it's basic stuff like, Hey, can you just post this post to your social media and help me share my business? Or can you leave me a review or do, do these little basic things to help each other and then sharing um, financial opportunities when they're available. So people know about those as well. But a lot of the things that people really need is just that strategy to figure out, okay, what else can I try? And there have been times, like there, there are a few people that were corporate employees previously, and then they had to make a transition because they were laid off. And I've seen a lot of really great support for them as well, because they're starting entrepreneurship as a way to keep money coming in and to save themselves um, from from um, financial difficulties at this time. And so people have been pouring themselves into those folks. Like we had one meeting where somebody was just trying to figure out for the first time how to write a proposal and what to charge. And we stayed on our meeting for another 30 minutes and nobody left because they wanted to make sure that she had it together. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Don't know how to stop it. (laughs) 
Um, well, so I, I love what you're doing because I, I myself have been a big advocate of women entrepreneurs and that's one of our missions as part of our organization is to um, support and uplift and empower women entrepreneurs. So I love what you're doing. And um, one of our last questions that I usually like to ask our, uh, our guests is what is your prediction, prediction for the future? You know, having someone who's worked with a lot of entrepreneurs or business leaders, what do you see on the horizon as it relates to your specific, your industry, or it could be, you know, anything that you see on the horizon? I feel like people are doing a really great job right now of appreciating, um, as far as business goes, we're appreciating the business, the cup, the customers that we have. I feel like the places that I patronize, they've been so kind, so amazing to me, and I will continue to be loyal the places that I felt the biggest, deepest connection to are the ones that I've continued to just pour as much money as I can into it, sending people there because I want them to survive. I want them to, you know, make it through this. Like I went into my chiropractor the, uh, recently. He saw my purse on the side of my purse. I had a little dangle that he had given me that had hand sanitizer in it. And he saw that the hand sanitizer dangling there was empty. <laughs> And he went and found another one to replace it. He said, here, put this on your purse now. <laughs> right. So it's just little things like that, that make a difference and really appreciating your customers and creating that um, continued relationship. So I think that's what people are prioritizing right now out of necessity. And I really hope it becomes a part of what we do in the future as just a constant of focusing more on who we have in supporting us over just this constant chase to get more or do, you know, get new people, but to really um, connect with the, with the community that we have. Absolutely. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being here. Last question is how can our audiences get in touch with you? You can find me at crystalcovington.com. My website is um, spelled with my, with my full name and it's crystal with a K. Awesome. And of course, I love what you're doing with women of Denver. That's uh, very near and dear to my heart when it comes to women entrepreneurs. And of course, Denver, because we are both uh, live there now. So fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. This was great. And of course, wishing you and your community the best of luck. And hopefully things will get a little bit easier as, uh, as things change. Thank you.